How are you guys are doing? We are now going to start with a new section and in this new section we are going to be talking about NAT or Network Address Translation. And Network Address Translation is a process that enables a single device um, such as a router or a firewall, which is what we're working with, right? We are working with a firewall to act as an agent between the intern intern in the internet or public network and a local or private network. And this agent acts in real time to translate the source or destination IP address of a client or server on the network interface. So basically, this is what extended the life of IPv4. Because back in the days, I remember when people were talking about that, um, you know, IPv4 was dead, we were running off IPv4 IP addresses, and then it came, you know, NAT and saved the world. Because back in the days, there was no private IP addresses. It was all public. So every single device had a public IP address to get to the internet. There was no firewall to do network address translation. Um, the router were not doing network, network address translation. Everything, um, you know, every device out there had its own public IP address. And this is not the same anymore, right? Uh, because we can have 20,000 um, devices on a private network and then we can just use one public IP address to go out to the internet and that's what uh, NAT did right and on this videos we have been doing some NATing um, but we haven't really been talking about what NAT really is and for this video uh, we are going to be doing um, source NAT overload and this uh, or overload source nets, you know, and in overload source nets, all the internal IP addresses are always mapped to the same public IP address, right? So the 40 gate firewall configurations um, commonly use the outgoing interface address for this. And overload NAT allows the 40 gate unit firewall to take um, to take multiple hosts behind it. You know, you can have as many hosts as the firewall can basically handle and just use one public IP address for this. And I can see, say, I have a picture here of what overload really means. Um, let's say that you have three devices. Um, let's say that one device goes out, one eight two one say that four that two. And the port number this is what overload means. Overload meaning is that it's gonna, it's gonna get assigned, it, that the source IP that gets assigned, right? And it's gonna go out through the router or firewall and the firewall is going to add it into the NAT table. So in the NAT table, it adds it right here, right? So what it does is it's going to translate it and saying that, okay, since you have a private IP address, you cannot go out to the internet. Therefore, I'm going to uh, assign my public IP. This is a translation, but I'm going to keep that source port because whenever it comes back to me, I'm going to know that I, I, where, how to get back, right? So it goes out to the internet, at that port 443 let's say and then when it comes back right let's say this is 443 with a web page what's going to happen is that it's going to come back it's going to get back to the router or firewall and at port 1030 the router is going to know where to send it back so it's going to do the the translation and it's going to go back to 192 once that 2 1030 and it's going to be sent to that um it's same to the sack uh exactly a uh, computer that tried to go out all right, so that's how this this works. This the overload part is that it uses that that port. It overloads the IP address with a port number. All right, and that's because you know we have sixty thousand four hundred sixteen ports available, <laughs> and that's why it works great. So let's go ahead and start with this. And if we go to my topology, uh, you can see that I added a new Windows device port E1 slash zero. So I need to configure this port to be on VLAN 192. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go enable, config T, interface, I think it is E10 slash one. Let's do add a description here and let's call it to win, what did I call this? Win113 or Win13. Let me see what I named this. Use Win13, all right. And then what we can do is we need to do switch port um, access VLAN 192, I believe it is. And what is going to happen, let's go ahead and end it. Um, end, save this, uh, save it. And what's going to happen is that 
Uh, now this computer over here is going to get an IP address from the DHCP server that is running on that VLAN, right? So now we can go ahead and go to that machine. I think I have it open. This is the other one. This is the management one. But this one over here, so you get an IP address from that server or from that VLAN. So let's go ahead and do open command prompt. Do a config, IP config. You can see I have an IP address on that 192 um, VLAN. Looking great. We should be able to ping 192.168.1.254. There we go. Awesome. Also, if we go into that 192 VLAN, I believe I made some changes that I want to show you right now. And the change that I made was on 192 VLAN, I configure the DHCP server to use these two DNS servers 1.1.1.1, 8.8.8.8. All right. That's the only change. All right. So now we are ready to do this uh, uh, source NAT overload. And the way to do that is that we need to give that 182 VLAN access to the internet. And for that, we are going to be using a firewall policy. So this is basically, a, uh, I guess you can call it uh, source NAT overload in the policy because in Fortinet, you do that in the policy. So when to MPLS, we need to create a new to create a new policy over here we're going to call it vlan underscore 192 um to let's call it to when incoming interface we are going to be calling this when when and when two we are going to use both uh outgoing interface it is going to be actually this is incoming right incoming needs to be just 192 outgoing interface um it needs to be when when and one two source uh, just going to allow all the sources that's fine destination we are going to allow all service we are going to allow all we are going to accept the action is to accept this the flow is going to be of uh, the inspection mode is going to be flow based and we are going to be to and we are going to be doing here some net right we need to turn it on and then we are going to use the outgoing interface address later on we can do so more configuration and i will show you that so use outgoing interface address and use dynamic ip pool let's go ahead and enable let's uh do allow or log all the sessions that is great so now let's go ahead and save this policy so now this machine right this machine is this one right here uh, should be able to maybe go out to the internet uh, let's go ahead and open the command prompt again i should have let that open let's go ahead and ping google.com are we able to ping google.com yes we are that means we are able to browse so let's go ahead and browse and do all that all that cool stuff that uh that we can do in here ba -ba -ba -ba. let's go ahead and go to youtube.com let's go ahead and go to like x.com which is you know it's twitter now that's what they call Twitter. Are we able to do it? It looks like we have internet. Yes, we are able to go to Twitter. Yes, we are able to go to YouTube. And what we can do to basically verify this be behavior, uh, verify that, you know, source not overload is working, is that we can go to the dashboard. And here, if we go to 40 view sessions, we are going to be able to see that traffic, right? And in here, we can do see if we can see the source uh, you can see the source ports in here and you can see literally the destination and if you want to see the source net address uh, should be in here looks like it's not in there are we able to add this yep source net address source net port we can also remove this like duration in seconds packets we don't need any of that SPU that should be good apply it and here now we should see that the source net address so it is using 10 10 10 1 to go out and the source net that is using or the source net port that is using is port 49869 over here so you can see that it is using net source net overload so that's how you do source net overload also one last one that we can do if you only have or if you are a cli guru you like using the cli what you can do in here is you can do get system get system session 
list. I love CLI. And you can see over here, all the session lists, uh, you can see that 103 um, is going to, is using the source port. You can see over here, the source port 65527, and then it's being translated into this IP address. It's not a public IP address, but we are using it like a public IP address, guys, okay? So 10, 10, 10, 1. And you can see that it's using the same source um, port, right? And then it went out to it went out to Google right here. It went out to the internet. And then when it comes back and it comes back um, at 10, 10, 10, 1, asking for this, you know, for this port, it is going to know that it, it needs to be translated into this IP address and goes back to the same um, it goes back to the same computer. So that's how source NAT over low works and how you are able to verify source NAT. So now this is it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and we're going to keep doing more NAT. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.